I've got a feeling that this sculpture contains a unique invention of mine. I've never seen this done before and I'd appreciate you considering that when you watch it and let me know in the comments below. Thanks. Since the last episode I've cleaned it up inside and out and this is screwed down from below using those little white brackets so this and this are now all attached together. Now I'm going to start doing the copper work and I quite like things being really symmetrical and radially equal so I want to put some marks down, some lines down on the frame so that when I do my drilling for the copper vertical bits um, it's all going to be in a nice uh, sensible, clear and orderly grid-like fashion. But uh, I don't want to draw it all over this and get it wrong so I'm going to get a massive piece of paper pop it on here, send the tape all down, cover it up basically, and then I can make whatever mess I like. Welcome to episode five. So what I'm trying to do is picture the radial distance that I want coming out of the center for the supports that are going to go up and support the curved track. And these are every 20 degrees, which means on the inside rail, the distance between the two will be something like 60 millimeters, and on the outside, something, something more like 80 or 90. Okay, it's time to work out some of the basic maths and geometries and angles. Now, if I have an angle of ramp, which is about 20 degrees, I have an A of 20. I have a circumference of one, two, five, six. That means the height in one exact revolution would be 457. So I've done about two minutes of thinking and have decided that I will go with the 20 degree slope. So I'll cut enough copper to go all the way around 360, which will end up up here. And if I stop early, then that's fine. I'll just start to go really tall and see how far I get. In order to set the distance between the two rails, I've taped on these two three millimeter spaces. So that's five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven millimeter distance between the two rails. That'd be just perfect for the ball. Okay, well I've got the first solder joint done, but it's not very good. Uh, I think it's because I'm trying to solder around the back, so I'm going to move the whole sculpture around. I've made these kind of temporary wooden supports that I can move about and allow me to put the copper up on there. And I'm just kind of working my way around. I've done the first three. I think I'll do another one here. And then maybe I'll think about doing the outside track. So one, two, three, four, five solder joints and five supports done. You can see as I move this round, the gap between the rail and the upright stays in line and everything's in line with my radial pencil lines that I did earlier. So 
everything is coming out from the centre. I've now done 10 solder joints and it's looking marvellous. It's looking like some kind of amazing cathedral ceiling. There might be a Fibonacci code thing going on down the bottom, I don't really know. But basically every 20 degrees I've got a 60 degree angled support going up until it hits a 20 degrees rising copper track. So this is only the inner track. Um, and I'm just working out how high to go. I think this will be my limit. So this will be 14 uprights. And so this will be the top of the sculpture here. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna stop when I get to this one. Four more solder joints to go, and then we'll see where we are. Just to show how hard it is to solder, I'm on. I'm resting my hand on a platform. I'm getting on for 14 inches up above the bottom of the sculpture here. This is about another 10 inches up from that, and that's on the floor. So I'm soldering at head height, <laughs> and in my way, I've got the camera mount so that you guys can see. So, yeah. It's really, really, really tricky stuff. And that's the inner track pretty much complete. It's a nice distance away from the pusher all the way around. I haven't done a complete 360, I've stopped a bit short because it is getting quite tall and it will be a little bit wobbly and it goes up to uh, about 380 from the from the bed and i've got i think 14 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 14 angled supports and um yeah it's really good i can't wait to do the outside track uh, i've got to work out exactly what verticals i'm going to put in um, how many I'm going to put them, where they're going to be, and how I now know how tall to make them. So I think that'll be the next job I do. I will do the vertical supports for the inside of the sculpture that will also help support the track at the moment. And I'll do that first before I do the second track. So for the upright, so I thought I would try something a little bit different. So what I've got is three lengths of 1.6 millimeter copper wire, nice and straight. And I clamp them in the vise. Trim the ends off to be equal. And then put all three ends together. And then twist. And then when removed, I've got copper rope. That'd be nice.
Now I've got four uprights in and I'm going to join them together at the top to keep them upright and spaced apart. These will be um, kind of temporary bits of copper going round that will all get cut off at the end. But that will give me something to build from. So once they're all nicely set in position, I'll then start to attach them to the curved track. It's not very pretty, but it is going to be cut off, so that keeps all the uprights joined together, makes them nice and strong. And now I need to position the ramp exactly where I want it and put some horizontals and verticals in to attach these four verticals to the curved track. But first of all, I had to turn it all upside down and take out the threaded rod and the copper pusher, make a longer one cut the top off this. I've got a nice little brass nut to go on top so I'm going to put this all back together and that will be the pusher completely done. And then I can set the position of the inner track. So I've done all the horizontals off the verticals that will now hold the inner track in place and I'm very happy with how it's gone. I'm so excited because now I can begin the outer track and that means I can start to actually get a ball to rise up this thing. So let's do the outer track. Okay, I've now got one, two, three, four, five, six round the outside. It's going to get a bit tricky now because round here I can't come down at the right angle in order um, to hit the base because this is the narrowest point. So I'm going to probably have to do some complicated extra difficult square based supports on that side. But that's part of the challenge, trying to make it beautiful and strong and nice. And hopefully now you can see the kind of fundamental problem that I've got which is the, the, the ball spacing tracks that are normally on rolling ball sculptures cannot go between left and right because I've got to get this vertical pusher through so everything has to be supported from the outside and the inside but not both at the same time so I've got two balls loaded up let's give it a little go 